Are you the world's greatest dad? There's a pretty good chance someone might have actually said that about you. Maybe it was printed on that mug you received or in that greeting card that all of your kids signed. Maybe it was part of that gushing post that your wife put on social media. And I think if we're honest with ourselves, we'd agree that it's kind of nice, even if just for one day, to be called the world's greatest dad. But aside from the fact that it's impossible for more than one of us to actually have that title, I'm guessing that most of the time you know that it's just not true. Sure, your cheesy dad jokes might be cheesier than anyone else's, and your dad bod might be getting better each and every year, but, but aside from that, I'm guessing that if you're anything like me, your shortcomings as a father are all too obvious to you and very often painful to think about. If that's the case, I've got some fantastic news for you this week. The Bible is full of terrible fathers. Page after page, we find men who made absolute messes of their lives and messes of their families. And I, I'm excited to tell you about some of them this week. Not because it might make you feel better that at least there are dads worse than you, but because it illustrates what being a Christian father is really all about. Being a Christian father doesn't mean that you always get it right. It doesn't mean that you can solve every problem or clean up every mess. No, instead, God has given us this incredible responsibility of being right on the front lines as this small group of people that we call our family makes its way through this big, scary world. God has given us the responsibility of, of taking the lead in showing that the only way to get through that big, scary world is by constantly trusting in Jesus. In other words, God doesn't call us to be the world's greatest dads, whatever that even means. No, instead, God wants us to be fathers who are full of faith. It kind of reminds me of one of those dads that's mentioned in the Bible. He's not even mentioned by name, which is kind of nice because it, it helps all of us put ourselves in his shoes. In fact, just for fun, let's call him John. John was at the end of his rope. John had a son who was possessed by an evil spirit that constantly was throwing him into these debilitating convulsions. And John was frustrated and confused as to why no one could help. In fact, when Jesus showed up, he thought that maybe even Jesus was unable to do anything about it. And that's when Jesus reminded him that nothing is impossible for the man who puts his trust in Jesus. Nothing is impossible for a father full of faith. And that's when John said to Jesus, I do believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. I don't know about you, but that's something that I need to ask for all the time. Lord, help me overcome my unbelief. Lord, don't give my kids a dad who always gets it right. Don't give them a dad who can fix every problem and clean up every mess. Don't give my kids the world's greatest dad. No, give them a father full of faith. Hey, what's up everyone? Pastor Mike here from Time of Grace. Thanks so much for checking out this podcast. Uh, we certainly would love this message to reach more and more people. So if you wouldn't mind rating and reviewing this podcast, it would bring it to more people's eyes and we pray this message into more people's hearts. Thanks for your support and we'll talk to you soon.